Welcome to Mohobe Nuggets of Wisdom podcast. My name is Mumpulu Kiluruma Mohobe. Our objective is to enthuse, inspire, energize, and empower entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs of all stripes here in BW and beyond. We do so by inviting these entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs into our makeshift studio. Sometimes we call them to the restaurant, sometimes we go uh, to our studio and we ask them to share their experiential knowledge, their experiences and their expertise. And we ask them uh, as many questions as we can aimed at empowering you also as a viewer. Hello dear viewer, dear listener, my name is Mumpulu Giluruma Mohobe. I welcome you once again to yet another wonderful episode of Mohobe Nuggets of Wisdom podcast. We try to bring you empowering, life-changing information. And uh, I have a guest <coughs> who's going to do just that, uh, Mrs. Susan Sekweng who is based in Francistown. Welcome yes. to the studio. Thank you so much, Mr. Mohobe. You're a food technologist. Yes. Um, and a foodie and a foodpreneur. Share your background with the viewers. Okay. Mm. First of all, thank you so much for having me. It's such an honor to be here. So, as you explained, I am everything to do with food. I'm a food technologist. I studied in the UK and uh, I have food experience. I went to my first job was in a, f a food manufacturing plant. Mm. And uh, yeah, basically I've worked in Botswana in your, uh, for the last, is it seven, seven years? Mm -hmm. Eight, actually no, 10 years in mm -hmm. Botswana. Mm -hmm. And so now we want to now bring in the skill so that we can assist people start up in the foodpreneurship. Tell us about area. your training specifically. All right, so I did my first degree in food science and technology. It was an honors degree in the UK, in Cardiff University. And then I went on and did my master's degree as well, same in university what? in food technology, food science and technology. Mm -hmm. uh, after I finished that, I then also trained, I've done short trainings, mm -hmm. like your food safety management systems. We also trained, I also trained on your ISO 9001, your quality management systems. So we are trained, I was trained by SGS. So there are short courses where they give you the skills that you can impart. Because the food industry is evolving. It yeah. changes, standards yeah, are changing. Yeah, because I was going to ask you, mm. what exactly is food technologist? <laughs> what does that mean? So we play with food. Mm. And we just say, okay, fine. We don't have to be chefs. Because everyone, when you say food technology, they say, oh, you're a, you're a master chef. Mm. Or you're, you know. Mm. But what we do, we take food and we strip it apart and we make sure that we know what goes in. We increase shelf life. Mm -hmm. So we work with different preservatives mm -hmm. to make sure that a food product, if it's shelf life or it's sell by date is two years, mm -hmm. we make sure that food product lasts for two years. Okay. So that's what we do in, in you the You call food. yourself uh, a foodpreneur? Yes. And your company is called Plethora? Yes. Tell us, A, what is a foodpreneur? B, mm -hmm. what is Plethora all about? All right. So, uh, foodpreneur, mm -hmm. it's a coined word where you are an entrepreneur who manages and uh, uh, works in business. Now at the same time you're now into food entrepreneurship. So you run a business from farm to fork. So what do I mean by farm to fork? Any stage from the raw material in the farms to your supply, to your food manufacture and to your end product. So you can be in the cafeteria business, you can be in the food manufacturing business as long as you're an entrepreneur, but specific, specifically related to food products. I, yes. I uh, am an um, owner of two restaurants in yeah. which we're in yeah. one of them. Yes. Does that make me a foodpreneur? You are a foodpreneur, indeed, oh, okay. yes. I didn't know you're that. an established foodpreneur for that matter. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. <laughs> All right. Mm. Um, now that we have the definitions out of the way, Yes. Uh, do we consider our pharmacy in Botswana to be fruitpreneurs too? We can, we can take it in a sense that they are part of the chain. Mm -hmm. So they are the fruitpreneurs because they are producing the raw material for mm -hmm. the overall system and the mm -hmm. overall chain. Mm -hmm. And they are very key. So we would call them, yes, as fruitpreneurs. Okay. Yes. Tell us about the cycle, understanding uh -huh. the... You know the product cycle for mm -hmm. food mm -hmm. and where your company comes in okay 
So the product life cycle is four. There are main four components mm -hmm. when you're designing the food product. Mm -hmm. So maybe if I may backtrack a bit, mm. when you talk about uh, uh, product development mm. and you're talking about the development of food, new product development can mean so many things. Mm -hmm. So it can be, is it a new product, something never seen, mm. or you're improving on an existing product, or you're probably substituting a taste or a flavor. So when you talk about uh, product development, in this case, I'm just going to talk about developing a new innovative product. Mm. So the first stage is idea generation. Mm -hmm. What is the product? You sit down with your team. If you're a SME, you only have one person, probably it's in your idea, in your head, and you're thinking, how can I start this business? You write as many ideas as you can on a paper. I call it journaling. Mm -hmm. Journaling is a very key uh, aspect of my life. I journal everything. I journal mm -hmm. my next idea. I journal what I want to do tomorrow. I journal and journal. Write your idea so down. Brainstorming, brainstorming on paper. Brainstorming, yes, on paper. Mm -hmm. And you keep coming back. You don't just write and go. Mm -hmm. You write it today, you come back again, look at it, and then you get fresh insight. Mm -hmm. So the journaling process is very important. You write your idea, thrash it. Write as many ideas as you can. Then the second stage, now you start now the screening. You can involve other people. If you're a medium-sized company, then you can involve your marketing, your sales, you know, your other stakeholders. Screening is as in interviewing them to see whether yes, they're suitable or yes, not. Yes, exactly. Are the resources available? Do you have the manpower? Is it the right time to do it? Mm -hmm. Is the market ready? Because mm -hmm. that is the biggest question. Is the market ready for mm -hmm. the product? Mm -hmm. So after you have your screening and then you come down, you've narrowed down your ideas, then what do you start doing? Then you start saying, what is this product going to do? Mm -hmm. Is it, what is it fulfilling? Mm -hmm. What solution is it making? Because mm -hmm. most of the time people come and say, oh, I want to make a product, I'm the best chef, I'm the best jam maker in Botswana. <laughs> you know, or they'll say I'm the best uh, you know, icing sugar maker. Yeah. But the question comes, is the market ready for your product? Mm -hmm. Is it the right time? So we screen, you screen it, and after you come to your screening point now, then you've gotten your concept. Mm -hmm. I always like to tell people, put your concept, what is it trying to do, linking it to the unique selling point, mm -hmm. which we'll talk about later. So you then say, I want to make a food product that can provide a powdered drink with high nutrients. Then you start asking your questions, for who, for what, for when. Then you start going deeper into your market product, into your marketing side. Mm. After you've gotten that, then you start your prototype. <clears throat> so what is a prototype now? That is now where you're making your product. Mm. You're developing your product. You start bringing in the ideas. You're in the kitchen, basically. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mixing and adding and removing and placing. After you've got your prototype, people think I'm done. After that, I go. The next stage now is market testing. Do consumers want that taste? Do they want that product? Do they want that? Do they like it? After you get feedback from them, then that is when now you can decide you commercialize it. Mm. So you then now make it into a system mm -hmm. and then you produce it and then you launch it. So in a summary, that is what okay. it is. Okay, plethora? Yes. That's now, the second part of my question. Plethora, we come in as the... First, why did you choose such a <laughs> name? What does it mean? Plethora means abundance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's God's abundance. and. It's, it's, uh, yeah, it means abundance. Mm. Yeah, godly given abundance. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. And what does the company do? So the company, we help SMEs more specifically mm. who have an idea, but they don't know how to go through the process of developing that product, a okay. food product. That is what How long do. has the company been around and what significant accomplishments, if any, has it done? Mm -hmm. We've been around for one year. Actually, we are celebrating our one-year anniversary this month. Congratulations. Thank you so much. It was all thank about God. COVID, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> Actually, it was just before the lockdown and it was like, what's happening? Mm. So we thank God for that. Mm. Then after the year now, we help, we've, we've helped companies move from abattoirs to export license abattoirs. Mm. We've uh, done training. Already? Yeah, we've done quite a lot of training. We've done food safety training. In fact, mm. if I'm allowed to say it in the show or to You're certain allowed, companies, yeah. yes, we've trained established uh, food, uh, food uh, manufacturers mm. on food safety training. Mm. We are currently even working with the non-food sector mm -hmm. when implementing your ISO 9001 quality management systems. Okay. So we do 80% of our business is in the food, and then the 20% is in the non-food sector. Okay. Yes. Research, research, and more research. Uh, reminds me of real estate where we <laughs> say location, location, location. 
care is it about. Is research is at the center of your business? Yeah. We okay. don't sleep. We don't sleep. Tell us more about that. So what happens, a customer will say, I want to make jam. Mm. And we're like, OK. We sit down with them. We talk to them and tell them, give us your objectives. Your, what do you want? Mm. Then they'll tell us we want to make jam. We want it this flavor, and we want that. So we can go back, maybe spend a week just researching market trends, product shelf lives, raw materials, preservatives, because some people will come as much and saying we want a healthy range. So we have to go to legislation. When it's legislation says it has to be organic, mm. what does the organic percentage mean? Mm. The soil has to be tested. So we go in and just go in and thrash out all the information that is required. Mm. So that when we give the customer the feedback, they can make a conclusive decision to say, are you ready to start now? not okay so really you are like consultants yes yeah and and um, you then prepare a report yes. on the research you've done yes once this initial research has been done is there any additional research from there that yes. is involved yes. tell us about that second stage so now the second stage of the research is now we say okay the customer goes back reads and comes back and says look I'm ready and I think I want to go further then we then tell them okay pen down your objectives Mm -hmm. clearly then now we go and help them doing the research of the food processing mm -hmm. because remember they have to decide uh, do they want to scale up or mm -hmm. they're going to be somebody who's comfortable in the small scale mm -hmm. so then we now go further and research on your operations mm -hmm. we go and research on the raw materials in line with the objectives so we research the first part of the research is now the research of the product the general then the second part now we go in to look at the operations. We go and look into the market. We don't like dealing with the market ourselves. If we need marketing, we will hire mm. somebody to come and like, look, this person needs a marketing team. Mm. Same thing as the accountants, you mean the market research. The market research mm -hmm. If there are papers or anything. We do Why just the basic. Like doing it? We can you be a one stop <laughs> one, one That is our vision and yeah. where we want to be in the end. One stop place. Yeah, a one stop right. place, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about um, your, you, the, the USP, mm. unique selling proposition. Mm -hmm. Why is that important and why, how do you identify it in the, in the, mm -hmm. in the food business? Okay. So the USP is basically you entering to the mind of the consumer mm. and clicking such that they come to you. You have a product, I'm selling it, this product to you, mm. and you have to feel this product through my thoughts. So mm. you're basically channeling what you want to sell to the consumer and they have to get hooked mm -hmm. onto your product because these days let's talk about maybe sugar you have so much sugar in the market what makes brand a different from brand b and different from brand c so when you we tell people when you're making a product factor that in the beginning mm -hmm. because it is so crucial to have a unique selling proposition your unique selling point what makes you stand out mm -hmm. from everyone else because okay. we always say, I want to make this, but we are not very certain on the USP of what okay. we want, yes. Um, could you give an example of a product without necessarily mentioning the owners and, and help us understand the USP? Mm -hmm. Okay, for example, let's say I'm making rice, mm -hmm. okay? We know now that nowadays everyone is moving into the healthy range of products. So if, for example, I say I'm going to make this rice and I'm going to use the, the latest or organic uh, or products or everything that is grown in, and I'm going to put made in Botswana. So I put that made in Botswana on the bag of rice and it goes into the shelf. And it's beautiful logo and everything. But once in the shelf, there will be so many other products that are already in the shelf. The consumer is going to look in for innovation and they're going to look at something that's different. Yes, you may have made it in Botswana with organic range and state of the art, and indeed it's a healthier product. But if it goes into the market and it is not uniquely positioned, it's easy for the consumer to just look and say, mm, I don't want this, I'm gone. Mm. Yeah, so your product can, you think it's unique, but because you're not giving that direct connection to the consumer, it is very crucial mm. that you have your USP. And the USP comes from your objectives. Mm -hmm from the initial get-go, what are you making? Mm. Yes. So that is what we have. Is this good. to say that a product can never sell if it doesn't have a USP? Yes. Completely? Yes, I can confidently say mm. so. Yeah. So is this really an exercise in psychology? 
yes. or marketing psychology. Why do you say that? It's because you are now you are selling a feeling. You're selling, you're making someone to say, "Come to me," and not them. Mm. So for them to come and catch you, for example, I'll give you an example. You go into a shop. As a woman, we already know our branded products, mm. household cleaning. I know I want sunlight dishwash. I mean, am I allowed to say mm. I want this particular dishwashing liquid? Mm. I want this particular. Uh, 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 what do you call that other brand? I don't want to say the, the rival, name. Rival the brand. rival brands mm. and the other products. So I know I'm going to the shop and I'm going to buy dishwashing liquid. Mm. So when I go in there, already my mind is in tune to what I want. I'm going to collect that. Mm. Now remember, in the supermarket, apparently they say they take someone a few seconds for a consumer to make a decision. So in that window period, if your product does not stand out, does not shout, and does not show innovation, you so mm. that is why in that Meaning small you've window eaten, you've been you've eaten, you've lost. <laughs> yeah. I hope I said it correctly. Yeah. Yeah. So that is the thing about the USP, mm. especially if you're a new product mm. on the market. Okay. You really have to do your research. And that is why we are so stressing about research. And the research comes through your objectives. Because if you don't have clear objectives mm -hmm. of what you want, goals, this is what is so crucial. We tell people, have an objective of what you want. Mm -hmm. From the objective, your marketing proposition in USB shall come through the objectives. Because you can say, I want to make a nutritive powder. For what? Such that it's all in one nutrients and vitamins. For who? For the teenagers and growing children who need for strong bones. Why? So that they can be able to, and then you say, but already there's this. Mm. Then you see, you're going through that really mm. depth of getting your product so that you don't mess up. Because the worst thing you can do is create a product, engage the resources to make it, Remember, you're spending your production costs, you're buying equipment, you're marketing and advertising, you need to get it back. Mm. So there's nothing as bad as creating a product that is not market ready. Yeah. Yes. Let's talk about um, starting small and scaling mm. up. Mm. Is it always important to do that? For an SME, especially for we focus on the SMEs and a new product and a new entrant. I'm talking about now a new entrant. If you're an existing big powerhouse blue chip company, Mm. For you, your new inno product innovation is on a different scope in comparison to an SME. If you're existing, your SME, your, 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 your scaling up would be, I'm reformulating re or I am using a cheaper raw material mm -hmm. or I'm making a healthier version of something. But for an SME startup who as a new entrant, it is always important to start small. I'll tell you why. There are four types of entrepreneurs. You have your small scale up entrepreneur where you start small, you have a product and you're growing with that product. For example, I'm making jam. So I'll put all my resources to make this jam. Then after a while you start realizing you have enough time, mm. your resources now are there, now you can scale up. Mm -hmm. Meaning people want the product, you then go to the second stage which is your scale up. Mm. And your scale up, you're now moving in from a small to a bigger company. And that mean, what, what does that mean? You're mm. going to bring more marketing you need to bring more resources. So meaning you have the funding to do that. There are some people who are just comfortable staying small. Then from the, 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 the scale up, then you have now your large companies. Mm. That's when your mergers, your acquisitions, where now you're established. For you, your product shifting is more of changing formulations or removing fat that is unhealthy. So it's very important to start do small. Do you actually help these companies um start small with mm. a view to getting ready for market yes. and if so can you without necessarily going to names give us give us uh, enlightenment mm -hmm. there what happened what actual experiences okay so we had a we are working currently on a new client as we speak mm. and they are making a product in the confectionery industry mm. so what is happening is that they have already been doing confectionery and now they want to do a product related to their line of business. Mm. So already you can see you cannot say get a loan and start, go to see that get a loan and start pumping this product out. Why? This is a new product, it's a new niche for them. Mm. So we say let's start small. Why? Is it so important? Why? They're able to then get the product formulation right from the get-go. If your product formulation is wrong and then you go big, the reviews that come through, you've already invested, can take you back because you don't have the solid 
research that has come through that the intel mm -hmm. one you of call my it intel. yeah the intel I like that <laughs> one of my yeah the intelligence actually one of my mentors and one of the people i worked for they actually told me here in botswana mm. a very well versed and knowledgeable man mm. uh, told me that you can even have four files of intel of your competition at mm. any one time files mm. what your competition is doing who is their next move who are their buyers, keeping one tap, just making sure you have that intel. Mm. So when you're starting small, for example, you can be able to say, okay, like for this, we told them, look, let's do this product. If it does well, and if we realize that there's market potential for it, we can scale up because we have the fundamentals. Mm. We have the prototype. It's able to expand. And that's when we food technologists come in. Mm -hmm. We come and help you say, okay, you're making, this is the formulation of that confectionery product. Mm. For us to increase it, we will need to expand it by this much. Yeah. So that is the scale up. But if you don't have that and you go big in the beginning, During this problem. stage, age of 4IR, mm. does that mean that the software involved um, tailor-made that you guys make available, mm -hmm. that sets out the systems? Yes, the software for, for the systems. Yeah. Mm. To, Maybe. Just explaining the step by step. Mm -hmm. Do you have special software that you use to no. assist you no. or to assist the entrepreneur? No. Okay. At the moment, what we do is if you're a food technologist, you come. Mm. As a food technologist, what we do, mm. we then do the formulations, which is calculation. Mm -hmm. So we say, okay, you want to make this product, the ratio of this to this to this is X percent. Mm and then we start building a recipe that. So we are calculating and adding it up. Mm -hmm. Then what do we do? We then formulate the product. The testing of the right, making sure the product is right, is done through systems and is done through machinery. Mm -hmm. Where you have your Naftec, they're doing a wonderful job. And then your Bob's, yeah. yeah. So Bob's and Naftec. Bob's and Naftec, yes. Okay, uh, perhaps the viewer doesn't know what each uh, one does. All right. So we have NAFTEC, which is your National Food Technology, National Food and Technology Center. So they do what we do, but they offer a lab. So they then help you formulate your product, and then they test that product. So when you're formulating a product, you're dealing with a lot of things. Mm. You're putting in your preservatives, you're putting in your taste, you're putting in your texture. All that has to be formulated to make a product that will make you happy. Mm. So NAFTEC help with that. And then they test that product mm -hmm. according to what? Legislation. Because remember, you're using sensitive items that need to be legislated. If you abuse that, then they can have potential defects and all that for mm -hmm. future. Then also NAFTEC, what they assist with is they assist you now also calculate the shelf life. Shelf mm -hmm. life is also calculated to say this product can last mm -hmm. two years based on, based this on that. Preservatives yes. And so on. And then Bob's, mm -hmm. they, are they, they are responsible for the legislation. Mm -hmm. It's so important when you're making a food product, adhere to the food legislation. So do you assist the foodpreneur yes. in interacting with these bodies? Yes, we do. Okay. A lot, a lot, okay. a lot. A lot. So you really hold them by the hand? Yes, we do. We okay. do. Yeah. Now let's talk about the statutory and regulatory framework in Botswana. Yes. What pieces of legislation are there and what regulations are there that we're talking about? Okay. So in Botswana, we have the Food Control Act, which is uh, very key for anybody who is in the food manufacturing. So remember, we said in the beginning, it's from farm to fork. Mm. So from the farm, you have legislation, which is your good agricultural practices. Mm -hmm. In the case of Bob's, they will have, in the event that they do not have that legislation, mm. then they will have partners mm. who are there to assist you get that legislation in place. Mm -hmm. So they are the all one stop. Mm -hmm. If they don't have it with them, they will definitely give you the partner who's going to be responsible for that. Yeah. Yes. Then we also have the, there is the Water Drinking Act for those who are doing bottling water. There is good, a good library mm -hmm. of standards for anybody who's going into food manufacture. You have your peanut butter, you have your jam making. Yeah, so are the local there. authorities involved, like councils and yes. district? What, what, what legislation do they have or what Okay. What, what, yeah, they have bylaws? What, what they exactly have the bylaws, yes. Uh -huh. They have the bylaws. Now, the council, what they do, they, it's in levels. So the council will come and make sure, are you producing the food hygienically? Mm -hmm. Okay? Then they'll say, are you using what we call good manufacturing practices? Mm -hmm. Personal hygiene, sanitation, and all that. Then they're given, now you go into your legislative, which is now your bobs. They'll come and say, now you're going a bit higher. Because like in food manufacturing in Botswana, 
there, are, there is a requirement for you to have the minimum, at least something what we called your food safety management system, which is your HACCP. Mm -hmm. What is HACCP? Mm. That is just your hazard analysis critical control points. What does that mean? Hazard analysis? Critical control points. Yes. You all, for example, I know all abattoirs that are in Botswana that are slaughtering the minimum at least for you to export out, you must have HACCP. And we have clients mm. and we've been able to guide them with their standards. Mm. So Botswana Bureau of Standards are the ones for HACCP. They are the ones now who guide you. What is that basically? Mm. Is you identifying the hazards in your premises and then controlling them. That's mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Or eliminating them. Uh, you they can't can be eliminate, but you can bring them to acceptable levels. Mm. And I'll explain why as we go ahead. Because, for example, your, your hazards are your biological hazards, which is your bacteria. Mm -hmm. So what do you do? You have to put in steps to make sure that they do not grow. Mm -hmm. We all know one uh, bacteria, every 20 seconds, they double. You didn't know that. Yes, every 20 seconds, bacteria double. Mm. So that is why, look at COVID. Mm. Yeah, it's a viral. It's a bacteria. It's a viral in, uh, infection. It's a yeah. biological uh, yeah, it hazard. also doubles and like it, uh, That's why it's so it, yeah, proliferative, yes. It spreads fast. Yeah. All right. Um, the need to find a food scientist or technologist. Mm. And in other words, the need to hire plethora. Mm. Uh, talk about that. Okay. Food technologies are so key. Mm. What we do, we sit down with you and we take your recipe, making it market ready, such that it can be scalable and it can last on the shelves because people will be like oh i make the best jam then we say can it last mm. can it outlast its competition so we make sure that it can outlast competition so, and on the shelves. so in your case you have a lab where you do all these things we partner uh -huh. that is why we partner we all actually most of the time we refer them to navtech mm -hmm. for now yes we partner them are you planning to get them. your own lab soon or is it something in the pipeline let's wait and see no i mean i'm asking <laughs> what your plans are if it, yes, God willing. How feasible yeah. is it to get a, your own lab so it's, that you are independent? It's, it's very feasible. Very, mm, very okay. feasible. You can. In terms of best practices, yeah. looking at other you know, companies yeah. in your area that you want to emulate, do yeah. they have their own labs? Yes, they do. And what happens in those labs? Exactly. So they do everything. Mm. You come with your idea, they formulate your product, you get your prototype, they test it. And then they even commercialize it. So commercialization is the part where they come in and help you scale up. Mm. So once you go with your product out of the place, they help you uh, barcode it. Mm. They help you t uh, take it to Bob's for testing. Because you need for you to sell, you need the Bob's standard mark to show that you have adhered to all the quality and safety parameters of your product. You won't kill people, basically. Yeah. yeah. Isn't the, the making of a prototype prohibitively expensive sometimes? Yes. And, and a, why is that? the case and mm. B, what can be done about it? Okay. In the food industry, really, to be honest with you, I know in the tech, it's quite a challenge. But in the food industry, for us, our prototypes are mainly, believe it or not, kitchen-based. Mm. So if you're in the kitchen, you just make your product, then you can be able then now to bring in your small scale. We call it the pilot. Mm. So we're not making the actual big thing then what will happen in the case now when it gets expensive is in the event you're making a product that mm -hmm. is probably reduced fat or probably you're making a substitute for mm -hmm. a raw material in the bigger production line. Mm -hmm. So for the food industry, it's rarely going to be new. It's going to be something that is it's low scale because you'll be doing it in the kitchen. Yes, we actually encourage people to do it in the kitchen and make it such that when it goes up, it's going to be... As something. a result of the COVID situation, mm -hmm. Has there been a, a spike or an increase in uh, food manufacturer or, or inquiries about mm -hmm. food manufacturing? Mm. A oh. lot, a lot of it. Yeah, mm. there, there's mm. been a lot of uh, people who are inquiring to make products. Mm. And a lot of people also, there's one great inquiry people are making is, how do I deal with my farm waste? Mm -hmm. How do I deal with my, I have a farm, I produce this amount of waste, what can I do with it? Mm. Yeah, there's a lot of inquiries on that. People are also coming out saying they want to make new food products. Mm. There are recipes that they're realizing, oh, I can make something good. But we always take them back to the drawing board. Where are your objectives? In terms of the farm part of the farm to 
fork um, value chain. Yeah. How are farmers doing in Botswana? Um, because I, I think farming is not really regarded as the profession. So mm. what are your observations? What I've seen, the farmers, they are producing, which is a good thing, and they will do it extensively as part of. So we're getting a lot of farmers coming up, making a lot of vegetables, but it ends there. There is no value addition. Mm. So it will be like, I make tomatoes, I have hectares and hectares and hectares of tomato. But then the question comes, value addition. Remember, as long as you're a farmer, you have waste. We lose a lot. There's a lot of waste going on in farms. So what I've seen is people don't know what to do with that product and they throw it away. But that's gold. Mm. You have tomatoes, cabbages alone. You can produce tons of waste. Churn it into a pickle. What's a pickle? It's like a pickle, your acha. Hey, yeah, 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 your achas and your vegetable pickles. Mm. Your tomatoes, churn it and make tomato puree. Mm. Turn it and make it into tomato sauce. Mm. So there is the gap. What we realize from the farm to the fork, mm. there is a gap. So we want to join the farm and fork procedure the whole way because a lot of farmers have waste and I tell you, they're throwing it away. What are you teaching them to, that we can help you turn yeah. your waste into? Into money. You call it gold? Yeah, gold. Yeah. And, and how's, what's your success rate in this regard so far in the 15 months <laughs> in terms of convincing them to change? We have so far, to be honest, because we are still new, we are still in that process of trying to develop the products, mm. hoping we have a goal and a target within five years to have a footprint in that regard, such that we can be able to say, look, we're re revolutionizing this thing. Here is your product. Don't throw it away. Don't give it to the animals or the pigs to eat. Mm. Let's add value mm. and make money out of it. There's so much. Your tomato purees. Look, tomatoes the other day in the supermarket were 36 pula a kg. 36 pula a kg. Is that a lot? It's a lot of money, mm, okay. Mr. Mokopo. Okay. <laughs> tomatoes right. go like for like 12 pula. Uh -huh. If they're in season, 9 pula. Okay. And then the other problem we have with farmers, then they'll produce, then we get a glut. And then what happens? We get excess product, cannot be sold, the price. So it's such an erratic process. So we want to just come in and say, enough. You know what? Even if you produce this much, this is where we come in. Yeah. You've traveled extensively, even as part of your education. Mm -hmm. Uh, which country or, or which set of countries would you say uh, you know, are showing best practices in so far as mm -hmm. food production and even preservation and avoiding waste mm -hmm. that we are talking about? Okay. Where were you most impressed? I was most impressed in Kenya. Uh, I'm from Kenya. So the system of agriculture is really advanced and there's a lot of value addition. So what impressed me is that there is no waste, there is no, everything is produced and sold. Mm. In your beer manufacturing, you get your downstream processing, then you get your products that are even using the fertilizer. So it's input into output. So mm. I saw a real cycling of resources and material. There's nothing of, there's a glut or there's an excess. Mm. So I was really impressed by that. There's a lot of food manufacturing there. In fact, food scientists and technologists the, the market demand for them is so high because every in other Kenya day... In Kenya or just generally? In general. Mm -hmm. Even in Europe, in the UK. In fact, they wait for them. You're starting, you're finishing your courses like best, top five, come here. We want you to come and work. Mm -hmm. Because they are so consumer and market, you know, they're forever trying to come and beat the market trends. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Consumers are ever evolving. They're so complex. Okay. Yeah. So in Botswana, uh, what will it take for us to get become like Kenya? Botswana, we need to put in a lot. First of all, the food technologists need to know there needs to be industries because the industries will then create the demand for the food technologies and then create the demand for now the need to value. What do you mean there value. needs to be industries? industries to like food what? industries, for oh, example. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you have your food manufacturing because most of the food technologists who come out of school will go and work for industries who are already established probably outside Botswana. Mm. So what will happen, they'll just come in as QA, and uh, food safety management. They are not actually in there for the new product development. Why? Most of the NPD is done outside at the head NPD? stations. Uh, new product development mm -hmm. is done outside station. Yeah. So they bring the product already formulated into the Botswana shelves. But mm. if local industries, and they say, like farmers say, okay, our waste, we're going to start now manufacturing it and making tomato sauce, for example. And then that tomato sauce, we will develop it in Botswana. 
we're going to do everything in Botswana to be a Botswana made in Botswana product, mm. then what will happen? The re revolution starts. Mm. The other thing is, if you have a tomato producing company here, you are five of you. Remember, you're all generating waste. Mm. It's very expensive, for example, in the meat industry. You have blood, mm. you have animal pieces that are wasted out in the water. Mm. You need an effluent treatment. You need to treat yeah, that. Yeah, you need to those things. Yeah. yeah you need to treat call it. it tripe. Yeah, the tripe. Tripe is very nice. By mm. the way. <laughs> <laughs> so you need to you need that water to be treated before it can be disposed off into the water utilities line. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So what do we do? If you're four of you, it's cheaper for you to establish an ET an effluent treatment plant together in one area. Mm -hmm. Rather than you having one in Kasane, one in Maun, it's very expensive. Yeah? You have lots of them like that, scattered all over. So you have abattoirs all over. You have an abattoir in Maun, mm -hmm. you have in Hansi, mm -hmm. you have in Francistown, you have in Khaboroni. Okay. So they all have to. So that is why we want that clustering. Now, talk about commercialization. What does yeah. that entail? So commercialization is taking your product prototype. Mm. You're happy with it. Mm -hmm. The customer is happy with it through market testing. And they're saying, mm, you have a biscuit. Let's say you've developed a biscuit that is low fiber. You mm. know, you've claimed it can help the heart, mm -hmm. something like that. Mm. You give the consumers to test it. They say it's okay. They like the test. They, they like the, the, you know, it's nice. Mm. Then you've got good reviews. Then you say, okay, now it's time. Let me now go and open my manufacturing mm. plant. And then basically commercialization is now making the product into the market. Mm. Yeah. That is the commercialization. You say packaging is key. Mm. Packaging as in just wrapping something up or mm. packaging as in what? Mm. The final product, mm. the dress of the mm. product. Mm. So the end of the product, if I have, I've made my biscuits. Remember the consumer buys with the eyes mm. and they have that window period. So if you've covered your box, that's basically what you need to put in your research of your packaging. Who do you want to see your product? You don't want to make jam in a or in a in a in a container that is of Vaseline, for example, a lotion <laughs> bottle. <laughs> People will be like, you know what? Like even if I ask you now, when you go looking for toilet cleaner packaging, mm. what will you go look for? Even you don't even need to look far. Mm. You know the shape of the toilet cleaner. Mm. You know how it is shaped. Yes. Already that is conditioned in our minds. Mm. So packaging is so key because that is the only thing you have to communicate with the consumer of your product. And because it's a full product, it needs to be able to maintain the freshness and the quality of the product. Remember, it's going through dropping, being put off, customers come, bread, they'll squash it, you Check know? It up, yeah. So it has to withstand all that. So you have mm -hmm. to have it invested. And now we are all going green, so we need to be also be mindful of and that. And that sort of helps uh, yeah. the foodpreneur to do what? We help you from the beginning, no, I mean, uh, so far as on the packaging, packaging. Yeah. we help you now, we guide you to say, okay, this is a product, for example, the oil, mm -hmm. like, you know, in, when you're making your pickle, your acha, mm. for example, you'll, when you open it, because it's a high fat product, you'll get that uh, tomato sauce ring, for example, mm. that's the oxidation. So we then tell you, look, when a customer opens this product in the shelf, in their fridges, it's going to form that black mm. ring. So make sure when you're doing your packaging, design it till the top of that part, such that even if they open and close it, it's not going to be an issue. So that is what we help you say, look, you're making this product, this is what is suitable packaging for that. For your biscuits, you want to put them nice and flat on a tray. You don't mm. want them stacked up, they'll be crushed. They'll be, so we help mm. you with that, basically. From your observation mm. in the context of COVID, where are Batswana gravitating? Where are the greatest desire to, to manufacture, to get into food production or food mm. packaging? Mm. What would you say are the sort of products that are getting the most attention at the moment? Wow. <laughs> it's such a span. Because you have your people making jam, mm -hmm. you have your icing sugars, you have your people who want to make peanut butters, your, your spreads. So it's, it's not, there's no definite trend of what people want. That's mm. from my observation. Mm. Maybe there's a trend analysis, I'm yet to see. Mm. But definitely people are jacked up and they're like, you know what, I think it's time I manufacture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people want to do the catering sachets of your tomato sauce. We have Napro in Pique, mm -hmm. an extension of Naftec, which mm -hmm. they do very good pickles and they do a lot of uh, uh, beetroot, pickled beetroot, where you beetroot for weddings, you don't have to go there and saha, saha, saha. Mm. So that was one of our projects when I was working at Naftec, mm. is to create those pickles for the retail market and for the hotel industry. 
Okay. Yeah. And in terms of relationship with NAFTEC and NAPRO, mm. NAPRO is there cut off like the topic of Capricorn? Mm. They do the north and the other one does the south. How does it work? So what happens is that NAPRO basically t it took over of the SPEDU initiative. Mm -hmm. So they are manufacturing plant. So they manufacture exactly taking from the farmers waste and mm -hmm. try and generate products. Because there's a lot of waste. I'm telling you, Mr. Mohobe, you'll be shocked. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of waste that is generated from horticulture. Mm -hmm. So that is basically what is what the role doing. of the Ministry of Agriculture in all of this? So they are very instrumental in the sense that, especially with NAPRO, it was, I think it was the first pilot mm -hmm. uh, trial. Get the farmers, get the market, and start making sure that, you know what, your products are coming slowly to NAPRO for mm -hmm. manufacture. So you're guaranteed a market. Mm -hmm. So they help with the supply chain. And on top of that, com um, uh, what do you call it? Getting farmers together, yeah. sensitizing farmers and saying, look, come, we have this that is happening. Or look, come here. So getting farmers together in an area with the same skill set and then guaranteeing a market. And I think it's a very good initiative. It is. Yeah, yeah it's mm -hmm. a very good initiative. What general advice can you give on the area of uh, you know, um, branding or other mm -hmm. positioning and branding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you able to share on that one? Yeah, I could. So when you, my thing, what I can say is the branding, it's so key for you to get it right. Write your objectives from the get-go. What do you want this product to fulfill? Because that will then lead you to your marketing strategy. Mm -hmm. Is it going to be a low-fat product? It's not just new. New to do what? Everything is new. Who is your target market? Is it for the teenagers, the youth, the young? So for you to position your product, have your objectives from the get-go. Mm. What do you want to make and why? Then that will give you, you're now moving into the mind of the consumer mm. so that your product will click, it'll be love at first sight, <laughs> especially in the shelf. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, is it glossier the better or, or you are, are you a minimalist? <laughs> I'm a minimalist. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, in terms of no. your study of the consumer, uh -huh. why is the consumer gravitating? Do they want glossy stuff? Uh, it's so bold gone. letters. It's diverse. Some want color. You know, for example. So how do you target them? That, that's the thing. You have to now bring in the experts, the marketing you experts. Are the experts. <laughs> oh, a different expert. That yeah, they are the ones who now do the proper mm -hmm. brand positioning. Because I'll tell you this, for example, food, it's psychological. Mm. When you see red and you see yellow and orange, it triggers the senses in the mind, hunger. Mm -hmm. Just think about it. If you see McDonald's is red, Burger King is red, KFC is red, so it's all psychology of color. When they see red, if you see red, it triggers the receptors of hunger. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? You want to eat. Mm -hmm. So you're drawn. Oh, when you're shopping. Ish. I didn't know that. Yeah, red. Mm -hmm. Red triggers hunger. Actually, I wrote an article on LinkedIn about that. Mm -hmm. Color psychology. What's red. the opposite of red? If somebody wants to lose weight, what color should they? <laughs> Who wants to lose weight? You want to lose weight? No, I'm just saying, in case. <laughs> it could it, be. I mean, in yeah. other words, what's the opposite of red? Blue. <laughs> Actually, they say what? If it's, uh, if I can remember very well, if it is, uh, if it is what, calming and health and F, it's green. Mm -hmm. So if you have your eco-friendly, that is why they always say the green, yeah. uh, green stuff. But mm. food, anything red or orange, mm -hmm. it triggers it in the mind and you get hunger. So that's the thing about packaging when you're positioning. And I'm sure the experts will say, I don't want you to enter into a domain, but I'm sure the mm. experts will tell you it's all about psychology, how your product mind, you remember from you as the producer, mm. goes into the mind of the consumer and they are hooked on you, and it becomes love at first sight. So does Plethora intend to to get uh, those branding specialists as part yes. of their... What is the plan? Tell me more. That is our, That will be our absolute plan. Because mm. what, what we did in our vision, we want, we want to be the one stop mm. where you come in, you have an idea, and you come out with a product. Mm. So that is what we want to do, and it encompasses a lot. It, it encompasses accounting, finance, budgeting your product, costing, bill of mm. materials. You can't mm. just say, I'm making jam, does it make money? So in the end, we do want to have that. So one. talk about Plethora, what are its plans then, 25 to 10 years? Are we going to likely to, how soon are these things going to come <laughs> to fruition? Five years. Five years? Yes. Okay. Yeah. You don't want years. to say more about that? No. Oh, I see, okay. <laughs> All right. Um, now that we've talked about branding, mm. we come to the tip. Food safety risks. Mm. Um, I've, we've heard of issues of 
food poisoning. Mm. We've had issues mm. of even some of his preservatives being very unhealthy mm. at some point mm. and uh, contributing to our unhealthiness. Mm. So what, what, what food safety tips can you share? The most important thing I would tell anyone in the food manufacturing, get, even if it's not us, but we offer the service, get your food safety management, your procedures in check from the get-go. Don't say I'm making it in my kitchen, no. In the US, actually, they are allowed to make products from the house and sell. There is a law. So it means that your systems must be checked. How do they protect the consumer then? Yeah, they, then they come and audit your, your house. Mm. There are certain things that you should have. Mm -hmm. For example, you should have this, you should have this, you should have this, they'll mm. tell you have this. Mm. Like in a food industry, they'll tell you you have to have a hand washing s station. Mm. If you're in the meat industry, you used to have a sterilizer for the knives. In your own house. If you're doing it and yeah. you're selling, why not? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're not paying rent. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a lot of products like that. So even here, I would advise people, don't say I'm waiting to grow. No. Mm. Operating procedures are so crucial because it's a make or break. Food safety risks, we heard about the salmonella case. There's the case of listeria in South yeah, Africa. Tell me why that is so. Why is the greatest susceptibility for fish mm. or, or things from the sea to cause havoc? Yeah. Why is that? Because remember, the sea is anything. It's a dumping site mm. and everything can happen in mm. the sea. So there are particular bacteria that are thriving in that condition. Mm -hmm. So what happens, once the product now comes out, you have your, it's not only fish though, you have your chicken as well. Mm. You have certain conditions that if given the chance in the meat, yeah. in the meat mm. they will I think one of the most vulnerable is, is pork, isn't it? Actually chicken. Chicken. Yeah, okay. chicken is the most vulnerable because chicken you can die. Mm. Because of salmonella, you can die. Beef, mm -hmm. you can control it because the main one will be like the ones from your handling, your e your your E. coli, mm -hmm. yeah, enter uh, pathogenic. Those are the ones which are going to come. But chicken is so Chicken and seafood, mm -hmm. they're very, very sensitive. Okay. Yeah. And, and in your company, how do you help the foodist or the food uh, preneur guard against food mm -hmm. poisoning and guard against? Do what, what, what systems do you put in place? Okay. So what we do, mm. we work together with the legislation. There is legislation mm. that says, remember, bacteria is living. Mm -hmm. You cannot completely eradicate it mm. more especially if you're working with people but you can bring it down mm. so what we do we take the standard the bob standard and international standards mm. and then we interpret to say okay you're making meat meat requires this to be done so we put in your building blocks which is your hygiene mm -hmm. your personal hygiene people have to wear certain things you can't just go into a food factory just like that mm. you have to wash your hands Pharmaceutical industries are even more stricter where you bath, you come in, you bath and then produce. So mm. we help you create those systems in place to reduce them to manageable levels. What yeah. about the danger of fecal contamination? Is yeah. it there in the food chain? A lot. Farm? Yes, a lot. How serious is it in Botswana and how, what, do you, what do you do against it? So fecal contamination, especially I'll talk about it in the meat industry. Mm -hmm. So what will happen, remember you're, you're dealing live with the carcasses, a cow comes in, so what you do, you have to put in measures. Mm. So they can be, the law requires, like for example, if you are doing as, Botswana used to export beef to the UK. Yeah. So they had us, there was a BRC, which is the British Retail Consortium Standard, mm -hmm. that had to say that whenever you slaughter, you wash down the animals with a bit of chlorine, but that it's metered, it's controlled, and you wash it down. What does that do? It mm. reduces the microbial fecal contamination too a manageable level mm -hmm. so you must put in procedures when the cattle comes in for example when you're slaughtering isn't it they they, they take out the head mm. then you hold you put in a clip on mm. the esophagus uh, yeah, yeah because it's going to be upside down mm. to prevent the gut mm. from coming out, out yeah. yeah so there are measures that we help you say you put this Place. Is it? Yes. And you actually go step by step. Step by step. It's a tedious job because you have step by step and you audit. What okay. does audit mean? You check. Okay. Then also when they're removing the hide. Remember mm. the hide is the cows are busy doing Fisted, their business. Yes. Mm. On the hide is full of cow dung. Mm. And now when you're slaughtering, you shouldn't wash it down. No. Mm. Why not? So you increase the, the chances of contamination. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You Rather can you wash should it. Do what? So you, what you do is just make sure that you go back again. Mm. Make sure, for example, the cattle, I know it's not realistic, but the cattle, the guts are minimally empty mm. so that if they're removing anything out, mm. it's not as much so that they don't get contamination on the mm -hmm. height. 
and then what will happen when you're slaughtering and you're opening up the hide, mm -hmm. make sure that the outside does not touch the inside of the hide. Okay. Yeah. There are some who would just argue it's better to go the uh, vegetarian route <laughs> to avoid all this. What do you say about that? Even vegetables have bacteria. Rice. Yeah. Uh -huh. Rice is a specific bacteria that is very dangerous, especially if you reheat rice. Yeah. Yeah. So always heat your rice top. Okay. Yeah. So there's dangers everywhere. Everywhere. There's no one. Nothing. No one is safe. Okay. We've covered our points. Yes. Tell me um, what you want to ask me. So basically, what I wanted to ask mm. is, have you thought about having this platform, but now in such that people can come and share, and then people can also call in live. Like in other words, make an interactive. An interactive. Yeah, we, I, mean, I have two our, questions for you. Yeah, so it's our one, second yes. year, so yeah. we, we haven't really thought of that mm. because normally when we're shooting, people are at work. Mm -hmm. So we wonder whether it's really feasible to have people mm. stop for the nuggets for two, three, four hours. Sometimes you shoot four in a day. Mm -hmm. So the whole day you are busy. And so we, we, we are not geared for that mm. yet. But maybe in future, mm. never say never. Okay, number yeah. two? Number two. The reason why I say that is because you're doing a very good thing, I must say, okay. because a lot of people are learning through these platforms. So I wanted to ask, do you ever get situations where people come and say, oh, Mr. Mohobe, or maybe compiling, like to say, can you guide us on we want to do one, two, okay, three? Okay, it hasn't gotten that to yeah. that yet, but what we do is, we make sure that our titles are properly labeled mm. and uh, we have episodes numbered mm. with a title mm. and I try to go about um, saying enough about each episode mm. on social media such that there is a trackable information mm. if you want something on. Mm. For instance, if you can type on, say, here it's food technology, mm. you know, I want to include mm. that title. Mm. So, but it has not been done to the full extent that it needs to be done. Mm and uh, it's a work in progress mm. so we'll try and um, maybe further categorize it in future okay. i'm even thinking of uh, doing what i've seen other youtubers do mm. which is to split to take a series of programs that mm -hmm. have a similar theme and then cut and paste uh, the concept how to yeah. be wealthy yeah. you got that how to ensure safety yeah. maybe yours will be in that one yeah. Yeah. and then maybe uh, further repackage and make it more palatable mm -hmm. for the viewer. Mm. So those are things we are thinking about, but okay. we haven't really implemented as yet. Oh, cool. Mm. That's cool. Are you a farmer? Uh, a farmer in the sense that my father uh, gave me uh, his cattle post, and I grew up in a cattle post. Wow. But I would not claim to be a farmer commercially. Uh, it's more like a cultural thing, because when I look at the economics of it, I see that I'm losing a lot of money going to Maragain. <laughs> but somehow, there's a, actually I have, a, I have a nugget on it, uh -huh. just saying why a Motswana male is addicted, something like to that, Muraka. to Muraka. Yeah. Why Muraka is so important mm, to a Motswana male? Yeah. You should look it up. I will. So I explain, uh, because most of the reasons I have for keeping my Muraka are not economic in nature. <laughs> They're certainly not economic, yeah. So, so you're my potential customer. <laughs> I'll see you after the show. <laughs> yeah, indeed. And I want you to look at that camera yeah. and say a few uh, takeaway messages, okay. something motivational mm -hmm. that the listener or the viewer can go away with. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Mokobe. Mm -hmm. As Mr. Mokobe has said, we are now moving forward, Botswana. We want to we want to create industries for the food sector. So, if you have an idea, don't shy away. There are so many centers here that can help you. We are here. We have the government bodies that are here. Let's get going. Let's get cracking. Let's get the products out. So I encourage you, your idea is not too small. Call us. We can be able to assist you and help you then scale up to make a tangible and successful food product. Okay, how do they reach you? How do they get uh -huh. in touch with Plethora? What are the contact details? Plethora Consultants, we're based in Francistown and uh, we are just behind Game Mall by the uh, Nzano Mall game. And if you want to contact us, our number is 7287-7293. If you need an email address, then we can take it from there. What's the email? Uh, P-L-E plethora B-W at gmail.com. Okay. Yes. Social media? Social media, we're on Facebook, Plethora Consultants for now. All right. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much. You've been a wonderful guest. Thank you Thank very you much. Thank you so indeed. much, Mr. Mahoney.